Hello, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm doing well, what about you? I am fine, thank you. It's nice to hear that. So, have you worked in your platform? Yes, I finished all platform. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank Excellent. you. Thank that's you. nice. So, I guess that you studied all the videos? Did you check all the uh, or or you didn't? No. No. But you completed no. the exercises, all of them. Yes. Oh, that's nice. But but I, but I try uh, see the other videos to learn uh, more. That's fantastic. And we will continue practicing all those topics here in class. Yes. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, Roberto, how are you today? Very good. Very Thanks. good. Nice. And you? What about you? How are you doing with the platform? Have you finished the exercises? No. No, not yet. Vamos un poco, vamos un poco retrasaditos, pero esperamos ponernos al día. Ok, perfecto. Sí, recuerden que tienen que ir adelante. Ya tendrían que ir por lo menos por la unidad 3 con los ejercicios. Y Edwin, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo va con la plataforma, Edwin? Creo que aún no se conecta el audio. Ok, so, Hello. yes. Hello. Hello. How are you today? It's okay. Okay, nice. And how are you doing with the platform? I finished the second part. Oh, you finished the second. All right, yes. excellent. So you can continue with the third part. Eh, acuérdense, déjenos saber si tienen algún problema, ya sea para accesar o para desarrollar algún ejercicio, que con gusto les vamos a ayudar. Bien, gracias a los tres por estar a tiempo, por estar temprano. Erika ya ha visto que tiene problemas de internet, es la única que ha avisado que no se va a conectar. Pero pues en honor a ustedes que están temprano, vamos a comenzar ya. Okay, I'll start sharing my screen so that we can watch a video for today's class and we're going to start from there. We will continue practicing and doing some exercises. So let me, let me share my screen with you. And here it is. So in the last class, we were reviewing the vocabulary about furniture. So we continue with the topic of uh, the house, parts of the house, furniture, and we will add this topic. There is and there are. Conversation, there aren't any chairs. So let's watch the video and then we will practice a little bit more. Let me share, okay, I'm sharing now. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to form statements with there is and there are. Also, how to use some, no, and any when referring to different objects. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, There Aren't Any Chairs. This conversation illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's listen and practice the conversation. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it. But I really need some furniture. What do you need? Oh, I need lots of things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but there isn't a table. And there's no sofa here in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Now, let's learn how to use there is and there are. I would like to start by demonstrating the examples on this chart. There's a bed in the bedroom. There's no sofa in the bedroom. There isn't a table in the kitchen. There are some chairs in the kitchen. There are no chairs in the living room. 
There aren't any chairs in the living room. There's equals there is. To better understand how to form this statement, I would like to write some formulas. For singular objects, there plus is or isn't plus a, that's the article a, or no, plus complement. For plural objects, there plus are or aren't plus some or any or no plus some kind of complement. So let's take a look at the first example on the left hand side of this chart. There's a bed in the bedroom. This is a singular object so we're going to follow the formula there plus is or isn't plus a or no plus some kind of complement. So in this case we use there then the verb to be is is um, on the example is contracted as you can see there's we will use the article a the complement is bed in the bedroom we're going to do something similar with the next example there's no sofa in the bedroom at the beginning of our sentence we have there the verb to be is is once again on the example is contracted then we will use the article a because we are talking about a singular object finally we have the complement sofa in the bedroom the last example there isn't a table in the kitchen at the beginning of our sentence we use there the verb to be is isn't because we're expressing something negative then we use the article a because we're talking about a singular object finally we have the complement table in the kitchen now let's look at the right hand side of this chart for these examples we're going to talk about plural objects so we need that formula there plus are or aren't plus some or any or no plus some kind of complements. Now let's uh, look at the first example on the right hand side of the chart. There are some chairs in the kitchen. At the beginning of our sentence we use there. After that the verb to be are. Next we use some. It's important to mention that we will use some whenever we're making positive statements we can't say any for example finally we have the complement chairs in the kitchen our next example there are no chairs in the living room at the beginning of our sentence we use there after that the verb to be are Next, we're going to use no. Notice that we will use this expression whenever we're expressing something negative. And you can also say aren't any as well. Either one is correct. Uh, finally, we have the complement chairs in the living room. For our uh, last example, there aren't any chairs in the living room we start our sentence with there next the verb to be aren't after that we're going to use any it's important to remind you that we will use any whenever we're making negative statements we can't say some for example finally we have the complement chairs in the living room now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to describe the objects that you have and don't have in your house or apartment. After you finish this task, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, now that we watched the video, is there any question or do you think it's clear enough?
está claro o tienen dudas todavía de cómo funciona there is y there are? Any questions? No question. No questions. What about some and any? Is this clear? Está claro cómo vamos a usar some or any? No questions? All clear. It's all clear. Okay. So, in that case, we're going to start practicing the conversation and then we will complete some exercises about the grammar topic that we already watched on the video. Let me share with you so that you can listen to the conversation again. And after that, we're going to practice it with the ones that are here. So, okay, this is the conversation that was at the beginning of the video that we just saw. So let me play the recording. Page 47, exercise six, conversation. There aren't any chairs. Listen and practice. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it, but I really need some furniture. What do you need? Oh, I need lots of things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but there isn't a table. And there's no sofa here in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Okay, volunteers to role play. Volunteers to practice a conversation. Okay, I have Juan Carlos and Jose. Okay. But uh, fifth, very fifth. Okay, you start one and then Jose, sorry, and then one and then you change roles. Okay. okay. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it. But I really need some furniture. What do you need? Oh, I need lots of things. There is uh, some chairs in the kitchen, but I isn't in the, a table. And there is uh, there is no sofa in the living room. And there and there are aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Okay, pretty good. Now let us change. Juan Carlos, you start. Okay, Jim uh, This is a great, this is a, this apartment is great. Thanks. I love it. But I really need some furniture. What do you need? Oh, uh, I need a lot of things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but there isn't a table. Ah, there is no sofa here in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There are only this lamp. Oh, so let's, oh, uh, so let's go shopping this weekend. Okay, you did it very nice and the good thing that I can mention as well is that you were using proper intonation with the question. So excellent. Thank you so much, Juan Carlos and Jose. Let's listen to more. Do we have two more volunteers?
Okay, I have Ernesto. And who wants to practice with Ernesto? I volunteer to help Ernesto. Hello. Okay. I am Chris. I am Chris. This apartment is great. Great. Hello. 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 Who's helping Ernesto? Who le va a ayudar a Ernesto? Teacher, teacher. Uh -huh. A volunteer to help Ernesto. Okay, Juan Carlos. Thank you so much, Juan Carlos. Start again. Okay. Okay, okay. This apartment is great. Thanks. Great. I love it. It's great. Is that okay? No, oh, that's see. fine. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it, but I really need some furniture. 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 Excellent. What, what do you need? Oh, I need a lot of things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but there isn't a table. And there is no so no sofa here in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Okay, pretty good. Just two words. Solamente dos palabras. Vamos a great. 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 Uh -huh. great. great. And great. furniture. 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 Uh, furniture. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now you can change. This apartment is great. Thank you. I love it. But really need some fur furniture. Furniture. What do you need? Oh, I need lots, lots of things. things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but here isn't a table. And there is no sofa here in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for practicing. I saw that Roberto wanted to practice. Roberto Lemos, do we have another volunteer to practice with Roberto? Yeah. I volunteer to practice with Roberto. Yo. Queen, thank you so much. Bien, Inicia. Comienza si quieres. Va, empiezo yo si quieres. Okay. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it. But I really need some furniture. What do you need? Oh, I need a lot of things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but there isn't a table. And there's no sofa. Here's in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping this weekend. Okay, now change. Change. Yeah, please. The, okay. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it. But I really need so for furniture. 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 What do you need? Oh, I need lots of things. There are some shares in the 
teacher, but there isn't a table. And there's no sofa here in the living room. Uh, there aren't any chair. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Excellent. Very well done. I just heard this word here. 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 There is no sofa here. Here. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So moving on, we have the grammar focus that we already which have to use it in the platform video. And uh, uh, there is and there are. What do we use them for? Usamos there is y there are para hablar de la existencia o no existencia de algo. Quiere decir que there is y there are significan hay, de haber, de existir. Entonces, um, Cuando es algo singular, usamos there is. Como ven acá, there is a bed in the bedroom. Después de there is, podemos utilizar a o an, que ambos significan un o una. There is a bed in the bedroom. Eh, si fuera negativo, eh, siempre singular, podemos decir there is no. Y ahí ya no decimos a o an. Cuando es negativo ya no utilizamos el artículo a o, o an. There is no sofa in the bedroom. Eh, there isn't a table in the kitchen. So pueden ver si lo hacemos con isn't. Ahí sí, con is not. Podemos agregar el artículo a o an, que significa uno o uno. There isn't a table in the kitchen. Pero si utilizamos no, pues ya no necesitamos el, el no se pone el, el, el artículo este. Y luego some y any. Tenemos there are some, cuando so, es plural, podemos usar some. Eh, o si es singular para algún incontable. Entonces some puede ser contable o incontable pero siempre en oraciones afirmativas. Aquí estamos ya con plural, there are. There are se usa cuando es algo en plural, más de una cosa. There are some chairs in the kitchen. So esto me dice que hay algunas sillas en la, en la cocina. There are no chairs in the kitchen. Entonces podemos decir there are no o there aren't chairs in the kitchen y podemos agregar any. Any solo lo vamos a utilizar en oraciones negativas, solo para negativo. Eh, ¿Hay preguntas con esto del, del grammar that there is, there are some y any? ¿No? Bien, entonces tienen el ejercicio ahí en su material, ahorita les comparto. Okay. Okay, here's the exercise. And uh, we have to complete this part. Where is this part A? Write each sentence in a different way and then practice with a partner. So, tenemos que completar las oraciones eh, diferente a como está aquí, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, tenemos eh, I don't have a table in the bedroom. Entonces vamos a aquí, podemos, there is no table in the bedroom. Como es singular, pues estamos usando there is, y luego la negativa, there is no table in the bedroom. Y si tenemos que trabajar las demás oraciones, son cinco más. Podemos hacer la número dos también como ejemplo para que ya, ya luego lo dejo solitos. So it says, I have some chairs in the kitchen. I have some chairs in the kitchen. ¿Cómo me puede quedar la número dos? Voy a usar there is o there are. There are. Ah, uh -huh, porque está en plural. Muy bien, Catherine. Entonces, there are. Eh, Ahí por... puedo usar el en. Eh. 
No se le escucha, Ticha. ¿Hola? No, no le escuché. El de el any, eh, me dice any si solo se usa en oración negativa. de ah, 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 ah. any, por ejemplo. Ah, ah, ah. Y some lo utilizamos en afirmativas. Ah, y, ok, vamos con la número de la 3 a la 6. Los dejo que trabajen solos y para cualquier pregunta pueden... Habilitar su micrófono, levantar la manita. Traten de hacer el ejercicio, las siguientes oraciones solos. Acuérdense que aquí tienen el, 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 el grammar chart para referencia. Finished. Okay, ready? Does anybody have the number three? Number three, I have a stove in the kitchen. Yeah. 
Será. There's, there's a stove in the kitchen. Excellent. There is a stove in the kitchen. That's nice. Thank you so much. Así nos quedaría. There is a stove in the kitchen. Anybody for number four? I don't have a refrigerator. I don't have a refrigerator. There isn't a refrigerator. Excellent. That is correct. So for number four, it would be there isn't a refrigerator. So let's try it. There isn't a refrigerator. There isn't a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. There isn't a refrigerator. Number five. Number five, I don't have curtains on the window. There are. There aren't. Y ahí sí podemos usar any, ¿verdad? Porque estamos haciendo negativo. There aren't any. Podemos completar. There aren't any curtains on the window. And finally, number six. I don't have any rows on the floor. I don't have any rug in the floor. There isn't. Mm, rugs. It's plural, it's rugs. Esta es, eh, son plural, rugs. Uh huh. So we can write there aren't any rows on the floor. Okay. Now, about your house, can you write something similar about your house? Think of some. For example, I can say um, there isn't a TV in my bedroom for example there isn't a tv in my bedroom and you can say there are some chairs in the in the yard for example there are some chairs in the yard so you can think about um, what you have or what you don't have in your house and write some sentences. Ahí les escribí un par de ejemplos en el chat de la meeting para que pues vean más o menos qué es lo que necesitamos. Necesitamos escribir un par de ejemplos más para terminar este ejercicio. About you and your house. I'll give you time. And then we can share. You can write the four sentences.
Teacher, hay que escribir ejemplos de la, de la... Hola. Hay que escribir ejemplos de la imagen que está acá. Sí, ejemplos acerca de lo que... Eh, pues de su casa, por ejemplo. Ahí les ah, escribí okay. un par de oraciones en el chat para que las... Por ejemplo, yo escribí There isn't a TV in my bedroom and there are some chairs in the yard. Ok. Unas tres, cuatro, las que logren hacer. ¿Cómo van? ¿Ya tienen algunas? Pueden ser inventadas también. Volunteer, you can share like uh, orally or you can uh, write them on the chat if you prefer. Volunteer. Lo que tengan, si solo han escrito una, no importa. Yo, teacher. Ok, thank you so much. Uh, una es, there's a PC on the table. 
That's fine. There is a PC on the table. That's correct. Uh, next. Uh, mm -hmm. There is not a fan on the living room. There is no fan in the living room. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. Only two? Uh, last one. Okay, the uh, last one. Uh, three. Okay. There are some bell. on the second floor. There are some beds, verdad? Porque son beds on the second floor. Oh, there are some beds on the second floor. Yes. Excellent. Yes, that's fine. Thank you so much for sharing. Um uh, okay. anybody else? Alguien más? No more volunteers? Okay, if there are no more volunteers, we can go to the pronunciation exercise. Tenemos este ejercicio de pronunciación. Si se fijan, son dos sonidos diferentes. Um, tenemos a uh, Si se fijan, son dos símbolos que hay por aquí. Vamos a, a practicar. Yo, I'm going to play the audio. Les voy a poner el audio para que ustedes repitan. Y se fijen dónde está este, este símbolo fonético. Las palabras son como the, the, there are. Y luego, donde tienen este otro, que es como que por una O con una rayita en medio, es como si van a hacer una Z y se van a fijar de la, de la diferencia. Voy a poner el audio. Primero solo vamos a escuchar y luego le voy a poner otra vez para que ustedes puedan practicar y repetir en casa. Page 48, Exercise 9, Pronunciation. Words with TH. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice the pronunciation of th and th. There are 13 rooms in this house. The house has three bathrooms. Okay. Let's listen again and you can repeat. Page 48, Exercise 9, Pronunciation, Words with TH, Part A, Listen and Practice. Notice the pronunciation of TH and TH. There are 13 rooms in this house. Okay, repeat. There are 13 rooms in this house. The house has three bathrooms. The house has three bathrooms. Uh -huh. Volunteer? Hay algún voluntario para repetirla? No volunteers? Juan Carlos, thank you so much. There are 13 rooms in this house. The house has three bathrooms. Excellent. Well done, Juan Carlos. Thank you so much for participating. You did it excellent. Anybody else? Only Juan Carlos? Okay, thank you so much for practicing. And then we have this listening. It says furniture is expensive. Vamos a hacer este listening. Um, 
para pues eh, así lo practicamos acá ya que recuerden que no están estos audios en la plataforma si um, tienen impreso el, el material that's fine, pueden chequear en el material y si no pues le voy a dar tiempo para que escriban lo que está aquí en el listening en su cuaderno it says furniture is expensive what is the meaning of expensive expensive caro caro yes and yes furniture is expensive <laughs> now um we're going to listen to chris and linda talk about a furniture store we're going to check what does linda like check the things Vamos a chequear las cosas que a Linda le gustan. Entonces, so, podemos escribirlas en el cuaderno primero. Armchair, a bookcase, a sofa, a mirror, a rug, a coffee table, lamps, and curtains. Les voy a dar tiempo para que escriban en el cuaderno y luego pues voy a ponerles el audio para que ustedes chequeen. What does Linda like? Los que a Linda le gustan. Ready to listen? Ready to listen? Estamos listos? Yes. Okay, let's listen to the audio and check what does Linda like? Page 48, exercise 10, listening. Furniture is expensive. Listen to Chris and Linda talk in a furniture store. What does Linda like? Check the things. What are you looking for? Oh, I'm only buying a few things for the living room. Furniture is expensive. Yeah, it is. Oh, look at those blue armchairs. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, they are. I need two for the living room. Uh-huh. But what about a sofa? No, I don't like that color. And I have a sofa now, from my parents. It's blue, too. Oh, right. Hey, look. You know, this rug is nice, and it matches the chairs. Um, it's a little boring. Oh, wait a minute. That coffee table is great. Yeah, I like it too. Do you need a bookcase? No, I don't. So, let's see. The chairs, the coffee table. What else? I don't need any lamps. Oh, I know. I want some curtains. How about the curtains over there? Where? Right there. They're red. Oh, yes. They're perfect. Uh, 
Okay, did you have all the information or you want to listen again? Do you want to listen one more time? Yes. Okay. Page 48, exercise 10, listening. Furniture is expensive. Listen to Chris and Linda talk in a furniture store. What does Linda like? Check the things. What are you looking for? Oh, I'm only buying a few things for the living room. Furniture is expensive. Yeah, it is. Oh, look at those blue armchairs. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, they are. I need two for the living room. Uh-huh. But what about a sofa? No, I don't like that color. And I have a sofa now from my parents. It's blue, too. Oh, right. Hey, look. You know, this rug is nice, and it matches the chairs. Um, it's a little boring. Oh, wait a minute. That coffee table is great. Yeah, I like it too. Do you need a bookcase? No, I don't. So, let's see. The chairs, the coffee table. What else? I don't need any lamps. Oh, I know. I want some curtains. How about the curtains over there? Where? Right there. They're red. Oh, yes. They're perfect. Okay, now let's listen to your answers. What does Linda like? Can you mention the things that she likes? Armchairs. The armchairs, uh-huh. A coffee table. A coffee table. Love. And curtains. And curtains. Armchairs, a coffee table. And curtains, yes, excellent. All your answers are correct. So yes, these three things are the ones that she likes. Armchairs, coffee table, and curtains. So that's nice, very good. You did it well. Uh, then I think it was pretty easy. I'm going to stop sharing for a little while and I'm going to uh, check attendance. Let's say present when you hear your names. Daisy del Carmen. Daisy del Carmen Cepeda. No teacher, present. Edwin Antonio Torres. Present. Thank you. Ernesto Antonio Espinosa. Present teacher. Thank you, Ernesto. Jaime, Jaime Alberto Minero. José Alberto Orantes. José Alberto Orantes. José Alberto Quijada. Okay, thank you so much, Jose. Thanks. Jose Francisco Martinez. Jose Francisco Martinez. Josué David Mejía. Josué David Mejía. 
Juan Carlos Morán González. Juan Carlos. ¿eh? Juan Carlos Padilla. Present. Catherine Yvonne, sorry. Present. Roberto Party Nemos. Present. Thank you. Ruth Noemi Carpio. Vida Hilo Estel Pérez. Vida Hilo Estel Pérez. Okay, so let's check the video for the reading. Let me share, share with you one more time. Okay, to finish with uh, section number two, we read about two spatial houses. Watch the video and then we will discuss the answers. Hi everyone, in this class you'll develop skills in scanning and reading. Reading. Two special houses in the American Southwest. In San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. This house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Ms. Cisneros is a Mexican-American writer. She is famous for her interesting stories. The house has a porch with a pink floor. The rooms are green, pink, and purple. There are many books and colorful paintings. Many other houses near Ms. Cisneros' house are white or beige, so her house is very different. Some of her neighbors think her house is too colorful, but Ms. Cisneros loves it. Every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native American tribes. Most people stay in hotels, but some people stay in traditional Native American homes called Hogan's. Lorraine Nelson, a teacher from Arizona, invites visitors to stay in her Hogan. It has three chairs, two beds on the floor, and a wood-burning stove. Ms. Nelson teaches her guests about Native American traditions. Do you have any question about this reading? No questions? <laughs> No question. Okay. So um, we have this exercise about the reading. Has everybody completed it? Ya lo completaron este ejercicio? Most of you maybe not. Acuérdense que tienen que estar con la plataforma. Ya deberían ir por la sección 3. Entonces, eh, los ejercicios de la plataforma son cortitos y bien fáciles. Pero si hay alguno que les eh, parezca difícil, solo envíen. ¿Qué número de ejercicio es? Como aquí dice 2.12. Y um, si pueden una captura del ejercicio, si les está dando problemas o les sale mal, para poderles ayudar. Pero sí tienen que avanzar en la plataforma. Eh, con este de la lectura tenemos... Eh, 
leer el texto del listado de selecciones los artículos correctos de cada casa. No es necesario escribir el punto final. Ok, uh, tenemos las dos casas y hay que escribir de esto que le pertenece a la casa de cada quien a la de Mrs. Cisneros y Lorraine Nelson. Eh, tenemos three chairs, many book, colorful painting, porch with a pink floor, two beds on the floor, and wood burning stuff. Eh, las primeras vamos a seleccionar cuáles pertenecen a Miss Sandra Cisneros House. ¿Cuál sería el primero para Miss Cineros House? There is a porch with a pink floor. Ok, a porch with a pink floor. Porch with a pink floor. Uh -huh. What else? There are colorful paintings. There are colorful paintings. Uh -huh. And what else? Falta algo más. And the last one, there are many books. Many books. Okay, there are many books. Okay. For Mrs. Lorraine Nelson's house, there is a... There is a good burning stove. Okay, a good burning stove. Uh huh. What else? There are the next is as plural. Three chairs. Okay, there are three chairs. And the last one? The last one is there are two beds in the floor. Two beds in the floor. Okay, let's see. Okay, excellent. And all the answers are correct. So you see, number one, porch with a pink floor. Two, colorful paintings. Three, many books. And then in part B, wood burning stove, three chairs, and two beds in the floor. So that's not like really, really difficult, but yes. And now this is the last part of section number two. Remember to complete all the exercise in the platform. And then we have this section number three. The topic is what do you do? So in this, we continue practicing the simple present, but we're going to talk about professions and occupations. Let's watch the first video for section number three. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary. Vocabulary for common jobs. Additionally, You'll also practice describing the activities that different jobs do. Let's get started by listening and practicing the vocabulary. 1. He's a receptionist. 2. She's a doctor. 3. She's a nurse. 4. He's a pilot. 5. She's a flight attendant. 6. He's a musician. 7. She's a singer. 8. She's a judge. 9. He's a police officer. 10. He's a lawyer. 11. He's a cook. He's a chef. 12. He's a waiter. 13. She's a waitress. 
Fourteen. He's a salesperson. Fifteen. She's a cashier. Sixteen. She's a security guard. Now, let me write some additional vocabulary, which we will use to make sentences which describe the activities that these different jobs do. Places. In a hospital. In an office. In a store. In a hotel. Activities. Wears a uniform. Sits all day. Talks to people. Works hard. Stands all day. Handles money. Works at night. Writes tickets. Now, we want to connect the job to places and activities. Let me make a couple of examples and then I would like for you to make your own. A doctor works in a hospital. This is place. A doctor works hard. This is an activity. A cashier works in a store. Cashier works in a store. This is a place. A cashier handles money. This is an activity. Now, I would like for you to make examples with all the vocabulary words given. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. Share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, with this vocabulary, we can be working and maybe do a couple of sentences. Uh, for example, we can say a nurse works in a hospital. She takes care of patients. So we can write a nurse works in a hospital. Mm, she takes care of patients like this. Okay, I'm sending it. I se las escribí en el chat de la meeting. So we are working with the place and the activities. So we wrote a nurse works in a hospital. She takes care of patients. You can also write a nurse works in a hospital. She wears a uniform. Puede hacer algo así. She wears a uniform. Okay, I would like for you to write a couple of sentences and share it with the class. So I'll give you a couple of minutes for you to write your sentences. Um, y si hay algo del vocabulario que están viendo en la pantalla que no entiendan muy bien, pueden preguntar. Ahí tenemos algunas actividades como ejemplo que podemos utilizar. Words a uniform. Sits all day. Talks to people. Works hard. Stands all day. Handles money. Works at night. And writes tickets. O pueden usar diferentes también. Think in a profession, activities, and workplace.
We need Have we finished? Okay, uh, let's share what you have. A volunteer to read the sentences. Volunteer. Algún voluntario para compartir sus oraciones o todavía no han terminado. You finish. Or you haven't finished yet. You need more time? Or you prefer to write them in the chat? Si prefieren, nos pueden escribir en el chat las oraciones que tengan.
I volunteer. Okay, um, we have one here that the police officer or the policeman wears uniform. Uh huh. Wears uniform. And you can say that they work in the street. So you can say uh, a policeman works on the street and wears a uniform. A uh, policeman works hard. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing, Jose. Any other volunteer? Juan Carlos, thank you so much. An uh, engineer works in a factory. He works very hard all days. Excellent. An engineer works in a factory and he works very hard. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's well done. Any other volunteer? No more volunteer. Okay, now we can go to the next video. It is about the reduction of do and does. And let's see. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn to sound natural when asking simple present WH questions. Native English speakers reduce or omit many different words. This is the reason why you may not understand the program on TV even though you understand the script or dialogue in writing. This is a big pronunciation topic. However, in this class we will talk about the reduction of do and does. Pronunciation. Reduction of do and does. Listen and practice. Notice the reduction of do and does. Where do you work? What do you do? Where does he work? What does he do? Where do they work? What do they do? If we analyze the first example, where do you work? If you notice, do you are sort of like underlined at the bottom. Essentially, what we're trying to explain by this is that we are connecting those two words. This is called linking in English. So when that happens, the sound changes from being where do you work to where do you work. As I mentioned, this is a very big pronunciation topic, which you learn by listening carefully and repeating. So let me read out the examples without the reduction and with the reduction of do and does so that you can have a better idea. Where do you work? Where do you work? Where does he work? Where does he work? Where do they work? Where do they work? What do you do? What do you do? What does he do? What does he do? What do they do? What do they do? Now, I would like for you to practice and also to watch your favorite TV program in English and notice the reduction of do and does. Well, about the reduction, let me get to the outline. Okay, with the reduction, so you can see here, um, están como, es, se trata nada más de acostumbrarnos a unir las palabras, así como cuando escuchamos en estos audios, para sonar más naturales. That's the objective. And, Y ahí pues vimos los ejemplos de cómo se unen, por ejemplo, do you, where do you work? What do you do? Sonido es what do you do? 
Where do they work? Where do they work? What do they do? What do they do? So it's basically um, tratar de ir uniendo para sonar más naturales. Do you have any question in regards of that video? No? And then when you listen to the recordings, cuando estamos haciendo ejercicios de pronunciación y escuchan los audios, las grabaciones, pues lo ideal es tratar de um, repetir de acuerdo a como escuchamos. Por ejemplo, aquí tenemos eh, la primera, en la conversación de He Works in a Hotel y la primera fra eh, frase es una pregunta. Where does your brother work? Where does your brother work? So, tratar de repetir así como escuchemos, no tal vez palabra por palabra, aunque al principio sí, pero la, el inglés es práctica. Entre más usted lo practique, eh, lo va a ir haciendo con más fluidez, con más naturalidad. No es de practicar solo una vez y ya. Pero bueno, antes de ir a la conversación, ya lo vamos a escuchar para poder practicar y hacer un poco el ejercicio de unir los, las palabras. Eh, antes de eso, vamos a completar el ejercicio de the workplace. Who works in these places? Complete the chart uh, with jobs and exercise one. Podemos completar con los ejercicios, eh, con los trabajos de acá que vimos en el video. Cashier, cook or chef es lo mismo. You can say cook, you can say chef. Y ambos son para referirse a un cocinero o a un chef. Uh, doctor, flight attendant, judge, lawyer, musician, nurse, pilot, police officer, receptionist, salesperson, security guard, singer, waiter, and waiters. Okay, esos son los uh, trabajos que vimos acá en el ejercicio 1 con waiter y waitress. Acuérdense que esto es por género. Si es masculino, acá lo, um, lo tenemos acá en masculino, es el 12, ¿verdad? Waiter sería mesero. Y en la casita 13 era la waitress, que es la letra P, waitress. Ella es mesera. Entonces, ahí sí, en esa profesión es por género. Waiter, male, waitress, female. That's the difference. Now, let's complete these charts. For example, people who work in a hospital, doctor, nurse. ¿Quién más de estos podríamos sacar que trabaja en un hospital? Security work. Our security guard, uh -huh. algo otro, nos faltarían, ah, sí, security guard, that's fine. También los hospitales necesitan cocineros, a cook or a chef, todo igual, podrían poner ahí. Luego completar in an office, in a store, in a hotel. Completar con eh, por lo menos tres de las que vimos en la sección anterior en la 1 parte 1 Okay, let's try to pueden tratar de completar el cartelito o lo pueden hacer en su cuaderno si no tienen impreso el material. I'll give it that.
Okay, a uh, volunteer, what do you have for the in an office? Who works in an office? A lawyer. A lawyer, good. What else? A lawyer. We are missing two. Any other? A lawyer? Who else works in an office? Receptionist. A receptionist? Uh huh. Secretary. A secretary? Very good. In a store? What do you have? In a store? Cashier. Cashier. Excellent. Salesperson. Salesperson. Mm -hmm. Security guard. Security guard. And that's it. Very good. Now in a hotel. In a hotel. In a hotel. A receptionist. A receptionist, okay. Anything else? Cashier, security guard. A cashier, yes, a I'm... security guard? Mm -hmm. Valet parking. Oh yeah, a valet parking, excellent. Now we have a conversation here number three. Let's listen. Okay, I'll stop sharing and get back to the platform. Let's see. Okay, let's listen to the conversation and then we will practice. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn to form WH questions. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. I would like to get started by listening to a conversation titled, He Works in a Hotel. Let's listen and practice. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. Oh really? My brother works in a hotel too. He's a front desk agent. How does he like it? Not very much. He doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel does he work for? The Plaza. That's funny. My brother works there, too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actually, he's the manager. Now, let's try to understand how to form simple present questions. Let's analyze the examples on the chart. Simple present WH questions. Where do you work? In a hospital. What do you do? I'm a doctor. How do you like it? I really like it. Where does he work? In a hotel. What does he do? He's a manager. How does he like it? It's okay. Where do they work? In a restaurant. What do they do? They're waiters. How do they like it? They hate it. In order to form simple present WH questions, we will follow this next formula. WH word plus do or does plus subject plus the verb plus complement. It's also important to remember the following. Whenever we talk about the pronouns I, you, we, 
and they, we will use the auxiliary verb do. Whenever we talk about the pronouns he, she, and it, we will use the auxiliary verb does. So let's try to make sense of the first example on the chart. Where do you work? At the beginning of our sentence, we have the WH word where. Then we have the auxiliary verb do. After that, we have the subject. Finally, we have the verb work. Let's analyze one more example. Where does he work? At the beginning of our sentence, we have the WH word where. Uh, then we have the auxiliary verb does. After that, we have the subject, he. Finally, we have the verb work. Now, it's your turn to practice making as many questions as possible. Think of your friends, family, and co-workers and their jobs. You need to make questions and answers, just like the examples we saw in this lesson. After you finish this task, make sure that you share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, so we're going to go like step by step. The first thing is to practice this conversation in groups. I'm going to create the breakout rooms. Voy a crear dos breakout rooms para que puedan practicar la conversación. Recuerden que esta conversación que acabamos de escuchar en la plataforma está en la página, eh, acá dice 51 de su material. En el PDF es la página 18 del material que descargaron. Entonces, eh, no sé si antes de ponerlos en los breakout rooms tienen alguna pregunta con respecto a la pronunciación o el significado de, de algo que observen aquí en la conversación. No. No questions. Ok, let's get in groups. Vamos a crear los breakout rooms para que vayamos a practicarla. Recuerden cambiar de eh, compañeros, cambiar el rol, practicar a, en cuanto más practiquen, mucho que mejor. Ok, there you are. ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué onda? Le damos aquí, digan ahí si nos ponemos de acuerdo. Tiene el material ahí. Sí, ahí lo mandaron al WhatsApp. ¿Qué onda? Le damos ahí. ¿Qué onda entonces? Démosle, pues, si de... ¿Va usted primero o voy yo primero? Como usted guste. Va, voy yo primero. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. 
Oh, really? My brother works in hotels too. He's a front desk agent. How does he like it? No, very much. He doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel does he for, for, work for? The plus. That's funny. My brother was there too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actually, he's the manager. Cambiemos entonces. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. Oh, really? My brother was in a hotel too. He's from this agent. How does he like it? Not very much, but he doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel do he work for? The Plaza. That's funny. My brother works tears too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actuality, he's the manager. Okay, pretty good. Now, just remember, la pronunciación de hotel es como hotel. 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 Y luego hotel. la de agente, agent. 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 Mm -hmm. Agent. Excellent. Yes. Only those two words. Solo esas dos. Escuché mis pronouns. Hotel. Agent. Okay. Hotel. Hotel. Agent. Hotel. Agent. 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 Actually, he he's the manager. Okay. Intercambiamos. ¿Quién es? Eso de ahí se une otro. Okay. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. Oh, really? My brother works in, in a hotel to his from the desk agent. How does he like it? Not very much. He doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel does he work for? The plaza. That's funny. My brother works there too. Okay, oh, it's pretty good. Thank you. Now, I just oh. listen uh, two words. Escuché dos palabras. Uh, let's repeat. Hotel. 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 Okay. Uh, oh. Agent. 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 Uh huh. Y luego en, la, en las preguntas tratan de ir uniendo más. How does he like it? How does he like it? How does he like it? Excellent. How does he like it? Okay, very good. Continue yes. practice. Teacher, uh -huh. the, the name of the hotel? Uh, the Plaza. El hotel, si no, no le cae. Se pronuncia igual, The Plaza. The Plaza, ok. Thank you. Oh, continue. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actually, he is the manager. Okay, Chang. That's too bad. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. In a hotel. Oh, really? My brother works in a hotel too. He's a from this. Agent. How does he like it? Like it. No, very much. He doesn't like the manager. That's too, That's bad. too bad. What hotel does he work for? The plaza. Be funny. My brother work there too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actually. He's the manager. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Perdón. Hola. Una palabra pues, más. Esta es. Ahí sí. Teacher. Hola. Teacher. Sí. Nos decía. Sting. Sting. Interrupting. Sting. No. A esa palabra es bien difícil y cuesta de verdad agarrar porque como sí. igual pensamos la de español que decimos interesante, interesante, uh -huh. pero en inglés él es interesting, va wow. el estrepa en la primera sílaba, interesting. Ah, oh, okay. Interesting, okay. interesting. Y, eh, vamos, es in, vamos a oh. como eliminar una e. Okay. Eh, eh, la primera E la vamos a eliminar. La primera E no se pronuncia. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, ok, ok. Interesting. 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 Uh, one more time. Interesting. 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 Ok. Okay. Interesting. Daisy and I? Yes. Okay. Daisy. Comienzo yo. Okay. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. Oh, really? My brother works in a hotel, too. He's a front desk agent. How does he like it? Not very much. He doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel da, What hotel has he worked for? Not very much. He doesn't like uh, that the manager. That's too bad. What hotel does he work for? The plaza. That's funny. My brother works here too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actuality, he's the manager. Okay. Oh, boy. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. Oh, really? My brother works in a hotel too. He's a front desk agent. How does he like it? No, very much. He doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel does he work for? The plus. That's funny. My brother works there too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actually, he's the manager. She Ok, we're just waiting for Carlos Padilla. Me sale que todavía está en un breakout room. So, ok, so very good with the practice. Now, um, Aparte de la conversación, también vimos el tema de las preguntas, ¿verdad? Cómo se forman las WH questions en presente simple y ahí nos daba la fórmula, ¿verdad? Es eh, básicamente, vamos a escribir acá. Pueden ver la pizarra, ¿verdad? Sí. Uh -huh. So, decía que es, um, en los, es, son dos tipos de preguntas, eh, son las yes no questions y las WH questions o information questions. Eh, vamos a hacer una yes no question. Ok, does he like it? Aquí estamos preguntando que si a él le gusta. Does he like it? Hablando del trabajo. Vieron una pregunta similar en la conversación. Does he like it? Ahí podemos responder yes. 
quita o si fuera negativo, podríamos responder no. It doesn't. Ok. No, it doesn't. Pero si le agregamos eh, la question word como estaba ya. How? How does he like it? Recuerdan que practicaron esta pregunta, ¿verdad? How does he like it? Ahí ya no podemos contestar con yes o no. Porque ya nos está preguntando eh, eh, más, más a detalle. How? How, recuerdan que el how es como de qué forma, qué tanto. How does he like it? ¿Qué tanto le gusta? Entonces, eh, ahí decía he, he hates it. Lo odia. He hates it. Ok, lo odia. O oh, he doesn't like the manager. He doesn't like the manager. Ok. Entonces, eh, he doesn't like the manager. Si se fijan, no podemos contestar yes o no. Sino que decir, eh, en este caso, no está preguntando qué tanto le gusta eh, su trabajo, ¿verdad? He doesn't like the manager. So, <coughs> eh, ¿tienen alguna pregunta con esto? Eh, vamos a ver. Voy a dejar de compartir para irnos al acá, al share screen. Uh, ok. The simple present it has no questions. Ok. Eso es lo que vimos allá. Y then, how do you like it? La última pregunta, ¿verdad? Porque, bueno, las demás son como que ya, ya las conocemos bien. Where do you work? In a hospital? Um, In a hotel, in a restaurant, what do you do? I am a doctor, etc. Estamos practicando con how do you like it? Por ejemplo, how do you like your job? You can say, I really like it. Si realmente me gusta mi trabajo, yo digo, I really like it. Me gusta mucho, ok. If I said, um, it's okay. Es como, está bien. Ok, está bien. Eh, no está malo, it's okay, maybe it's not like a, a fantastic, but it's okay. Uh -huh. Está bien, no está mal. Um, then, then they said, I hate it. If you really don't like your job, you can say, I hate it. But here, <laughs> como la miren, verdad, luego va para YouTube. <laughs> you better say that you love your job. <laughs> Aquí vamos a decir that we love it. Okay, how do you like your job? I love it. <laughs> I know you love it. It's a good place to work. Yeah. Now, um, in this exercise that you have here in part A, so we need to complete the, the conversations. Tenemos que ir completando las conversaciones. I think that we can do it in a, at least uh, the first ones, okay? So we have, what does your sister do? My sister, she's a nurse. Y luego vemos que dice, does she eat? Y en la B, para, para saber más bien qué es lo que han preguntado, podemos ir abajo y ver la, la respuesta. It's difficult, but she loves it. Entonces, basándome en esta respuesta de it's difficult, but she loves it, ¿qué fue la pregunta? ¿Qué me le falta aquí a la pregunta? ¿Qué pregunta fue esa? <coughs> Any what idea? Does, what does she like it? Eh, mm, mm, más o menos. Vamos a ver, aquí está lo que está bien. Like, está bien. Like, aquí va. How oh, does. Ajá. How. Yes, 
How does she like it? It's difficult, but she loves it. Okay, ya completamos la primera. Eh, number two. What do you think? What? Where does it draw a book? First? Where? What? Where? What? What does your what? brother... Mm. No, no, no. No es what porque no Where? contesta at the airport. Where? Huh? Entonces, where does your brother Where does your brother Ajá, uh -huh. where, a dónde? Ay, where, ay, Dios mío, mi cliente, sí me dijo. Where does your brother, y lo otro sería work. Where does your brother work? At the airport, he's a pilot. Ajá. Uh -huh. And then we have, oh, does he eat? He doesn't really like it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Who? Oh. How, how does he like, how like it? How does he like, like it? Like. Like. How does he like it? Oh, he doesn't really like it. Mm -hmm. Then in number three. How do your parents like their jokes like Yes, excellent. How do your parents like their job? How do your parents like their jobs? Oh, I guess they like them. Mm, I don't remember. Do they? Where do the they other? work? Where do they work? Where do they work? Aha, uh -huh. where? Excellent. Where do they work? Porque me contesta in an office work. in the city. Yes. And the last one, y a cabal para terminar. I'm a student, fue la respuesta. I'm a student. What do you do? Excellent. What do you do? What, what, what do, you do? do you do? I'm a student. Oh, I see. Do you your classes? And they said they are good. I like them a lot. How do you like? Yes, how do you like your classes? How do you like your classes? Your classes, they're good. I like them a lot. Okay, espero que hayan podido completar su ejercicio en el material y puedan practicarlo en casa. Recuerden practicar lo más que puedan. Y ahora espero que se puedan poner al día con la plataforma los que aún faltan. Recuerden que tienen que tener ya lista la sección 1, 2 y 3.
de los ejercicios completos y si necesitan ayuda, ahí estamos en el chat de WhatsApp. Okay? I hope you enjoy your afternoon, que disfruten el resto de la tarde y los veo mañana. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.